my way home from a trip up north. You might see some other videos by then, you might not. And um, just, yeah, on the way home, saw that there was a forecast window that looked pretty good, only for a few hours. Um, the swell was up yesterday, so it's pretty hungover out here. Um, I'm not that far out yet. Had a bit of a mare at the boat ramp. Oh, just having one of those mornings, I um, jumped in. I had to rearrange a heap of stuff to, to fit myself in here with all the fuel jerrys and stuff like that um, from up north. Jumped in, thought I had everything sorted. You know, push the boat off, jump on the boat, go to start the engine. I've left the keys in the car for the boat. Drifting off, it's my cardinal. It's, it's the rule that I never break as well. Um, but yeah, I broke it the one time that I shouldn't have. So I'm drifting off. I'm like, oh, I could swim now, but you know, it's the strong offshore. It's blowing me away from the ramp. I know there's a spare on the boat. Check the glove box, check this and that. Couldn't find it. Eventually found it, cranked it over. Yes, good to go. Started steaming out. And I've got a few miles from the boat ramp. Shit. Go to open the um, front cabin, which is all where all my rods are. <laughs> and that's locked and the keys are in my car so I don't have any rods so I'm going back to my car to get the keys to unlock the cabin and then I'll head back out and I'll probably miss that weather window I was talking about absolute idiot this is just going to be a quick how-to on what I think is the easiest way to catch a WA Jewfish as well as pretty much any demersal species that is a prized catch in WA that's going to taste good what I'll be using is the easiest method, which is bait. We do a lot of bait, uh, we do a lot of jigging, some plastic, trolling, stuff like that as well. But um, bait's probably the easiest to get yourself into straight off the bat. More videos to come on if you do want to transfer into jigging and stuff like that. So these ones are the premium rigs. These pretty much are using all really high quality, all the best quality components you can get. You've got BKK five times strong hooks. So they just do not simply break you can pull these they're strength tested to over 20 kilos and then my scales don't do any more when they still won't break so ball bearing swivels as well um, which actually still twist under load they're the best swivels you can buy um, they're, tr they're crimped but they're triple crimp crimped the tag ends are all burnt like I said pull from any directions they can't break we've also got our custom own swivels there's three rings there I hope you can see that Crane swivels have a bad habit of when they you get pulled at a at an acute angle under load, they can pop no matter what they're rated to. Um, so we use these ones on our premium rigs. <clears throat> they do cost a little more, but you're just guaranteed not to lose your fish when you do have that 20 kilo jew um, going. So basically this rig comes in a pack like this, you undo it, you've got a single hook, so it's a Paternoster rig, right? You've got one single hook like this, which is just a single bait rig because Sometimes, um, some of the more flighty fish, like your smaller pinkies and your smaller baldies, won't hit, um, won't hit things like this. Most of the time, though, these ones are what you want. That'll be catching your bigger fish. Uh, so yeah, we've got the same hook on here, crimped, but you've got the squid under there. And then this one is the same thing, but it's actually snelled. So you've got two hooks there, and you can present a nice strip bait or whatever it is that you want to chuck on there, a bit of squid, a bit of oki. Um, and that does really well. This is the game changer. This is the one that catches your big fish because it presents well. And if the fish only hit the bottom, they still get full. And the other benefit with these is when you lose your bait and you're still over a good spot, don't worry about pulling up. You'll still catch fish without bait on, on these bottom ones. All right, so I'll give you a quick rundown with the sounder. I'm just gonna drive along out here. I have never fished this area before, but I'm confident in my abilities and my tackle. Um, I'll be using the trialene knot to connect the mono to the top of my swivel on the rig. Um, the trialene is the strongest terminal knot you can get. A lot of people think otherwise, but won't actually do the test. So if you if you do feel like doing a test and find a stronger knot, then um, definitely let me know in the comments. But the trialene is by far the strongest of all the knots I've tried. And yes, I've tried all those common knots that everybody does. So I've never fished this area before. I'm just going to be driving along. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can show you what I'm looking for on the sounder. I'll find something that looks like a dewy, drop on it, and we should hook up. And um, it's only me and my boat today. So I've got the life jacket on, e -perb in the pocket, dew bite shorts. You can zip the e -perb up in the pocket. It's, it's bloody game changer. It's one thing having a life jacket overboard, but if you can't tell anyone where you are, even if you do log on, um, then yeah, you're probably 
going to be in a spot of bother. So I always have the EPIRB in the pocket. Uh, I do have a little bit of squid there, which I'll be using for bait. You don't need anything fancy. Squid's generally pretty good. A bit of flesh is a bit better, but uh, I don't have any yet. So we'll start off with the squid. So this is the trialing knot. It's very similar to the blood knot, but it's two loops. So you put two loops through there. I've looped that through once. And then you just do the normal blood knot method. Three, four, about five with the thicker mono. And then you just simply put it through the two loops that you made. Straighten out that bit there. And then you want to hold the two loops that you made straight and the tag end. And then just pull enough to get the tension. Add a bit of lubricant. And then pull tight. Right, so what I'm going to be doing now is literally just driving along. I'm not very far from the boat ramp. I'm in an area that gets pretty hammered as well. Just to show you that, and you'll be able to see that I've got no marks on this spot, whatever it is that I find. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be driving along. I've got to empty the kill tank out. I forgot I had the bum out, so I'm just going to do that now. And it's 12.30 right now. I've only just come out. So just to show you that you don't have to be out there bright and early to catch your fish and how easy it is. All right, so I've just found an area that looks all right. I've just slowed down a bit. We've still got 19 knots as you can see there. See these couple of echoes? And what I'm doing now is just spinning around onto my track. So I'm just gonna show you what I do. So we've got this little bit here on the Simrad. You can literally just scroll left and right back track it's great, it's the best feature. If your sounder doesn't do it, you need one that does. I've got the cursor over it, I hit new waypoint. Over here, this is where I was driving and it will pop up somewhere along here, right? That's the track I had. Give it a sec, I've got a lot, thousands of spots. So there it is over there. So we'll drive over there and see if there's anything that's worth looking at. So I marked this at about 20 knots it was, maybe a little bit more. Um, my sounder will read as fast as you can get. There's a few tricks to that, but that'll be another video. It's really important to set up your sounder so that you can read at speed. Otherwise, you're just wasting, not wasting your time, but you're, you're missing out on a lot of opportunities as you drive. So we're just tracking back to this spot and I'll drive over it slower uh, and that'll give you a much better idea of what's underneath. Zoom in as you get closer. And as we're coming up to it, we'll see if we can see anything on there. And I'm just going to drop right down as I drift over it. And this will give you a good idea if it was something good or not. So this is where I play with the gain a little. I'll hit the gain and I'll dial it right up and dial it right down and I'll do the same with the color. And that gives me a good idea of what the bottom looks like when I dial the color down and also the fish and how strong the echoes are and it breaks them up into a couple, of, uh, it breaks them up into more individual fish and you can see what they are. So as I dial it up, I can see there that they're quite small. So I'm probably not gonna bother with this one. Uh, I'm only gonna be catching one fish and I don't wanna be releasing, I don't like releasing fish. So I'm gonna find something a bit better. And just to show as well, you can see where I've looped around. This mark here is the one that I marked first. And then this second one is what I've marked second on the screen over here. So you can see how close they are. All right, so I've just found a, uh, driven over another little spot which is definitely worth a second. So it was that part there that I liked. I'll show you the screenshot thing. I was going about 22 knots. There's a couple of bits of interest there. So as I loop the boat around, um, I'm just gonna mark sort of the tip of the lump. And then also, I'm gonna mark where the fish were off the lump. Just give me those two areas. So that was a lump and that was a fish. And then I'll drive between the two on here. As you can see, no marks in this area at all. Like I said, I'm fishing in an area I've never fished just to show you. Oh, I'm miles away. 
just to show you how easy it is well just to show you that it's not too hard to find a dewey in wa um, if you do the right stuff and use the right tackle slow it down as you approach see the bit of bait up here which is not a good sign really because it could just be a big school of bait sometimes bait All right, so we're, we're not even over it yet, so it's a pretty fishy area. Just gonna drop, boost the color up a bit. Yeah, they're fish. You can see it turns into lines. And then as we go over it a bit more, zoom in. Just turning to straighten up. Pretty much go right through the middle there. Click the throttle off and yeah. They're fish, but it's pretty damn baity as well. So if you boot, pull the color right down, you can see that the bottom, see the redness? You can see that the bottom's actually pretty pretty good. So this part here is probably the bit I like the most. And I'll do a little bit more of a drive around just to make sure that is the best spot. Very baity. But you know, these thicker parts of the echo through there, um, they could be a dewy or something, so we'll give it a crack. So for bait, it's just a bit of squid, vacuum sealed. The only problem with squid is it friggin' stinks. If you forget it, if you leave any of it anywhere. That should do. Don't leave your bait in the sun. It's one of my pet hates. Um, for a sinker, again, we sell these as well at Dubite Tackle. 500 grams is my go-to for bottom bashing. Just tracks the bottom that bit better. You don't need a super slow drift. A lot of people think you need a really slow drift. Uh, you definitely don't need one when you're bait fishing. So 500 grams is good. You cover more ground and use your reverse. If you do need it, when you do find, get yourself over the spot, use your reverse throttle. Just idle it in reverse, so that's why I always stand next to the motor. And that'll keep you on the good part for a bit longer. But don't be afraid to drift through new ground a little bit quicker than that. All right, so most importantly, we want this. This is, the squid I've got is pretty broken up and it's really small, it's the Californian squid. Most importantly is you don't want much hanging off that bottom hook so that if they do only just grab the bottom of the bait, they'll still get hooked. So this lines up quite well with that, that Snell version and then it's just a matter of getting a couple of smaller bits. Well, they don't have to be smaller bits, but just to make the most of what the small amount that I do have, I'll be using smaller bits for the top and middle hook. Good to go. I forgot to say that this sinker loop on the bottom of our rig is, is pre-made, it's just a loop. So all you do is literally push the loop through, go around the sinker, and pull itself tight again. And that, that won't come loose. Our sinker lines are always lighter than our main lines that the rest of the rig is made with. So that if you do get snagged with the sinker, your sinker will eventually pop off before you lose your rig. But I'm gonna go set up the drift and get onto them. So pretty much, because it's such a glass off, you can get away with, you can get away with um, pretty much being right on top of the spot, clicking it into reverse and then dropping your line. That'll bring you a bit behind your line and then as you drift forward back over it, you'll straighten right up. On bottom now, let's see what we've got. See so I'm getting small nibbles. Yes, yeah, so I've got a fish on. Not very big, so I'm just backing the drag off a bit. And I'm just gonna take it really easy. We're not up north, there's no sharks. If it pops off, that's not the worst thing. 
feels like a pinky. When they're fighting like this, and you know that they're pinkies, really fast foul tail kicks, um, they generally release quite well. So you don't have to be as careful as a Dewey, they'll be bringing it up even slower than this. Probably just B size. But I'm just going to release him because he looks fine. It's one way all good. Well, driven over another spot, I'll show you what that looked like back here. I liked this. It's hard to see, probably. I'll show you the screenshot. I was going 22 knots and then I backed off, then I took the screenshot so it'll look a bit slower. And then I've marked it, driven around. As you can see, it's gone red because I've slowed down. Slowed down right over it and some pretty tasty looking echoes. So I'm gonna mark that one. That was a little bit further up. And I'm also gonna mark this second one. So this patch actually doesn't look as good. The other bit looks a bit better. So I'll quickly bait up and we'll drop on that one up there. So as you drive back over, you just just go over it one last time, really slow, just to make sure that you um, that the fish are still there in the same spot. And if they are, they're normally good residential demersals like Dewey's. There's actually some other life there now, which is not a good sign. Still could be some good fish there, so I'm going to go back to the heart of the, the good ground and just fish that bit. That's a bit disappointing. I thought we were, to be honest, some beauties there. Might be small pinkies, I reckon, unfortunately. Almost my bottom. Oh, my Away. Yeah, they're only small. Had one better tap in there, like a bigger pinky. Problem with spots like this is your bait will probably get taken off before you actually get your decent fish swimming up to it. So what I was doing there is the machine gun hits have stopped the tiny drrr, and that means the bait was gone. And then this, I stopped getting hits as well. And then what you'll see is what I was doing was because I knew the bait was gone, I was turning into more of a jig action. And then you'd still get hits in it. But I was going like this. Jig action a little bit up. You can have see on the sound of where they are. See that? Again. So I'll just do that once more. The trouble is because the fish is so small, they're not going to get hooked. It's not what I want anyway. I think there's cattlefish ground as well. Those big pulling ones. And then when you when you jack when you try and jag it, it just pulls through. Most of the time that's cuttlefish. So 
a real slow bite. Oh, yep. See again, I would be very surprised if I got any bait on right now. Bit of a weird fight. I think it's foul hook. Which means I'm probably about to lose it. And I've got the drag right off quite loose. But that was just from jigging. Again, the machine gun hits, then nothing. And then this one just took it. Making it nice and easy. Wasn't foul hook. Pinky, see this? No bait, no bait, and no bait. You see there's no bait on that. Nothing at all, no scent, no bait on that hook, and no bait on that hook either. So again, these rigs are pretty cool. They was foul hooked, slightly with the second hook. I'm just going to let this one go. Let's see how he swims first. Wow, okay, that answers that. All right, so there you go. Like I said, you don't need bait on these. When you feel the bait go, turn it into a jigging action and you'll still get your fish. And that's pinkies. Pinkies are not as aggressive when it comes to taking jigs and plastics and artificials as well so the fact that it works on pinkies shows you that it's going to work on anything oh, i didn't get very far and i've just found this overhang here which is quite interesting so i'm just going to go for a market and go for a nice slow look over it more bloody pinkies but the ground looks really good very snaggy obviously just need a couple of thicker echoes to pop in there as well, would be great. So we're going right over it as you can see, brand new area. Come on. But uh, yeah, because it's a, a, an overhang, there's a good chance that on this bottom level, that's where your, your jewies and that would be anyway. So it's normally worth a drop regardless, um, because you won't see your jewies in there. But you know, that's what that thicker echo could be there. It could be. You're picking up the ground and also a, a thicker part of the echo is the dew. So, um, yeah, it's normally worth drop, dropping on anyway. Uh, so because of the glass off, I've actually decided that I'm going to quickly boot out deep. Um, so this video might have to be a part two when I go for the dewy. I've only had a couple of drops for pinkies and whatnot. On the way out there, I did just come across something pretty cool as well. So I'll just see what this is. It's probably more pinkies. Could be red bite fish, so which is good. I just got hammered on the way there. Is that problem yet? Oh, it's getting smashed on the way down, but they're only little. Anyway, if I've still got bait by the time I've got the bottom without a fish on, Um, yeah, steam out deep quickly. It's just too good conditions. I don't have that much light. Like I said, I left at 12. I'll come back here and see if I can get a dewy on the way in. Yep! Now, this is pretty cavey country. This is a weird. Not as big as I thought, it's barely doing anything. Off bottom, so it's good. You'll be able to see it on the sounder. What a pinkies 
swimming around it. It's not really swimming like a piggy though. It does feel a bit like a Dewey, it's definitely not a monster one. You take it right on the bottom like a Dewey too. Yeah, it feels a bit like a piggy. Interesting nonetheless. Oh, a big whale. Might be big Norwester. I haven't caught one of them in a few years. When you're dewy fishing in the normal sort of region south of Jero, you don't want to have your drag too tight and pull hooks. On the bottom, I can understand, but it's always good to just back it off when you do get it off bottom. And yeah, I reckon we might have a dewy here. So, I might have to take back what I said and then quickly sneak out for a deep drop anyway. Wait, it's just too good. Here it comes. Make sure I'm still recording. And I think it's a dewy. Still fighting, which means I've done well on the way up. And it's only small. And again, what's interesting is there was no bait left. So again, not a massive dewy by any means, but if you're coming out to just catch a fish, this is the easiest way to do it. Brand new ground, didn't have any marks out this way, and it's a region that gets pretty hammered. Keep driving, wait to see something, set your sounder upright, set your sounder upright. Make sure your sound is set upright. And um, drive around, see something you like. Keep watching my videos and I'll train you how to find the good ground. And you can catch Dewey's like this. He's only about 60 centimetres, but his size, exactly what I came out here for. Our pre-made rigs are the way to go. I'm gonna quickly put this one out of his misery um, and steam out deep and I might get a grey band or something out there, hopefully. I should also say that you don't normally have to go out this deep. It's always good to brain your fish by the way. When they do that flap, you see the eyes turn in, you know he's done. When you do catch your dewies, I should say, it's always good to spike them, lead them. Straight behind here is the best place. Don't cut through the neck <coughs> because you can start contaminating the flesh. You don't want to open up that flesh. You just want to cut through here and back up. You'll see the blood start dripping out and then throw in the kill tank or whatever you've got. Bit of a weird one in the end, guys, but uh, that's how you catch your deweys. <laughs> I was um, I was gonna stay in shallow and get the dewey, and I saw how good the weather was after a couple of drops and a couple of pinkies and thought, oh, I'll just steam out, quickly deep dropping, and um, try and get a grey band caught or something. And then on the way out there, I saw another mark. Well, I, I drove over something that looked pretty cool and dropped over on that anyway, and got the dew. So, on this small one, but that's all I came out here for. It's that easy, you just keep driving, you'll see something you like, have a drop on it. If you've got the right tackle, you're good to go. Again, that Dewey took the, there was still a little bit of bait on the top hook. He took the bottom hook with the snell with no bait on it. Um, so yeah, interesting one, pretty cool. And now I'm gonna quickly head out deep and um, there's a few whales around and see if I can get a grey band cod or something as well. And then I'll be heading in. <laughs> 